Greetings, travelers, and welcome to the Genshin Impact version 3.2 special program. I'm your host, Zach Aguilar, the voice of the male traveler, Ether, and today I'm joined by... I've been waiting for you for ages. Hey, everyone. I'm Kimberly Ann Campbell, and I voice Lesser Lord Kusanali, a.k.a. Nahida. This is my first ever special program, and I can't wait to explore the upcoming content with all of you. <laughs> What's up, everybody? My name is Alejandro Saab, and I'm the voice of Sino. Hopefully everyone's gotten to know Sino a little better during this version, and we've still got plenty of Sino coming our way in the upcoming version, too. And I'm sure lots of travelers are super excited to see what version 3.2 has in store for us. So let's jump right in and start with our new version trailer. Let's do it! Imagine this. We have orchestrated our plan and successfully rescued Lesser Lord Kusanali. We have changed Sumeru's entire political landscape. Huh? Did I just see something dart by? Having the doctor gone benefits him as well as us. <sighs> Amazing! So this is how it feels to walk out of that cage with my own body. Luckily, there is still some time left for me to take care of everything before I leave. So... You think this is over? Wait... No... I... Can't... That's the secret hidden by Ermin's soul concerning the truth of this world. The Balladeer has already... Already become a god? No wonder your own people have abandoned you, god of wisdom. At my command, you shall fall. My endless cycle begins. Your ploy was to sacrifice the Traveler here, was it not? Nilu, are you sure about this? You're taking such a great risk for them. I... I must admit that I'm a little scared. But I'll try my best for Lesser Lord Kusanali. Ahithem's well, plan is even more radical than I imagined. Brothers! Let's show them we Eremites are not to be messed with! Wizar, you've betrayed all of Sumeru, betrayed its Archon! Creating a god. We are using human wisdom to create a god. Let us reenact the scene of the Archon War. Come and inaugurate my birth as a god. We've got a lot to unpack from that trailer. Yeah. After experiencing the Subzerus Festival Samsara and surviving our journey through the desert, we'll finally get to the riveting end of the Sumeru Archon Quest in version 3.2. Picking up right where we left off, the Traveler is teaming up with some amazing characters to face the Academia and rescue Sumeru's Archon. But I'm sure the first thing everyone's wondering is how we're going to save the Dendro Archon. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Nahida's been locked up by the doctor inside the sanctuary of Suristana. It's not like we can just go walking in there. And on top of that, we're dealing with two of the Fatui Harbingers now. We've got the Balladeer in his super powerful looking boss form, as well as the doctor, who seems to be a real tricky one to predict. 
I'm not gonna lie, the Traveler really has his hands full with this one. Yeah, definitely a tricky situation. Totally. And besides these two Harbingers, we can be sure the Grand Sage will also be on his guard. But hey, with the help of two insiders like Sino and Alhatham, we might just have a way into the Academia. Well, as the General Mahamatra, Sino also has his own agenda. After being tracked and predicted by the Academia for all these years, this might just be his chance to settle the score. And if we're hoping to truly save Sumeru, we'll definitely need the power of the Dendro Archon to help us. Yeah, I can't wait to see how everyone's hard work and coordination plays out. And I don't know about you guys, but besides saving Nahida, I'm also curious how we're going to save Ermansoul. Plus, we still don't know the meaning behind the words that Greater Lord Ruka Devada left us. World, forget me. <laughs> well, travelers will be able to personally unravel the answers to all these questions in their own journeys through version 3.2. You know, I'm actually kind of curious what the future for Sumeru will be once they get through all of this and, well, you know, what will happen to the crew we've been working with along the way. Yeah, same. I just hope things will work out for everyone affected by Elazar, like Dunyarzad and Kale. Oh, and we can't forget the desert dwellers who have been mistreated all these years. There's a lot that needs to change for them, too. Right. So be sure not to miss Chapter 5 of the Archon Quest, Akasha Pulses, The Culpa Flame Rises. It'll be quite the ride, and I hope everyone will enjoy it. Yeah, and of course, the end of this quest won't be the end of everyone's journey in Sumeru. There are still many puzzles and mysteries waiting to be solved. Whether it's Lesser Lord Kusanali, the Doctor, or the Balladeer, I think there still might be lots of unexpected things waiting to be uncovered. Yes, it's gonna be awesome! Okay, so now that we've talked about some of the storyline, maybe we can talk about that massive mechanical-looking puppet we've seen? That's the god that the Academia has been creating. That's right, and now that you mentioned it, let's talk about the Balladeer boss battle. Whew, this boss looks tough. The Doctor must have put a lot of his energy into this. Yeah, the Balladeer has lots of strong and awesome looking abilities, so why don't we start by checking out some gameplay from the new boss battle? Sounds good! Woo! Just look at the size of it. Pretty sure this boss is going to push travelers to the limit. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, that thing is huge. And come to think of it, this is like the third Fatui Harbinger boss battle we've had. They really keep stepping up the art and design every time. It's so awesome. Yeah. It's so cool. This is an ultra powerful puppet we're going up against here. So we're talking huge attacks and epic moves. Let's break it down a bit. In the first phase of the battle, the Balladeer will use his massive arms to attack everyone. The arms are capable of utilizing different elemental powers, and there are several types of abilities, including attacks that create fields of burning or freezing effects on the ground. Oh, you know what? This fight kind of reminds me of when we fight Ruin Guards. I think we'll have to come up with a way to paralyze it. Right! And you might have noticed there are some arcane formations on the ground, so activating those might trigger some interesting effects. And I bet a lot of people are wondering what that thing is floating next to us. Not gonna lie, it's kinda cute. Oh, maybe it's a Paimon reskin. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but no. Not only is it super cute, but it's also super powerful. Travelers will need to charge energy for this little helper and use its special skill to counter the boss in battle. A helper in a boss fight? Yeah, that's definitely not Paimon. <laughs> <laughs> Once the Balladeer has transformed into this massive form, our usual attacks won't deal any tangible damage to him. 
So, the only thing capable of breaking through his defenses will be our little helper that we just mentioned. There will even be some moments in the fight where travelers will need to use an aiming mode to attack the boss's weak points. Oh, <laughs> who would have guessed that little thing would be so important against a boss the size of the Balladeer? I know, right? They also use some amazing special effects for all of the Balladeer's moves. Speaking of which, the cosmic appearance, the spacey special effects of his skills, really kind of remind me of the Raiden Shogun skills. Ah, you're right. And seriously, I can't wait to check out this new boss fight. I'm so hyped! Yeah? So now that we've covered the new boss battle, I think it's time to introduce the first of our new playable characters coming in version 3.2. Let's welcome Lesser Lord Kusanali, a.k.a. Nahida. Yay! Yay finally! <laughs> After everything we've experienced in the story so far, I think Nahida's already like a good friend to us. It's seriously so crazy what we've been through. Oh, I'm so happy to hear you say that, Zach. Okay, so throughout our journey, maybe everyone's already noticed some of the... unique... yeah, let's call it that. Unique metaphors that Nahida likes to use. And yeah, they can be pretty out there. Or sometimes she'll use really childlike language to describe some deep or profound idea. But the truth is, she has yet to set foot in the outside world since she was born. To her, all the knowledge that she has in her mind is like pieces of scenery that she's never seen with her own eyes. Totally. It's really hard to imagine that the god of wisdom had been locked up for 500 years. Uh, just makes me upset just thinking about it. But I'm sure everything will work out sooner or later. Hmm. If travelers would like to spend more time with Nahida, then be sure to check out Nahida's story quest, Sapientia or Maste's chapter. The quest will be available upon completing the Sumeru Archon quest. So be sure to check out the quest to learn more. It's nice that we'll get to spend more time with her, but I want to see Nahida in battle. What you got for us, Kimberly? Oh, I've got lots to share. But before we get to that, let's have a quick peek at Nahida in action. What they say is true. You have to see the world for yourself to appreciate how beautiful it is. Grow, grow, grow! The Temple of Wisdom! <laughs> wow. Wow. She's so cute! Aww. Look at her! <laughs> I love her! Aw, little Nahida is so cute. I love how she hops around when she's fighting. Oh, and her swing too. <laughs> so, what's that skill that looks like she's using a viewfinder or something? <laughs> that seems pretty different. Yeah. Okay, so let's start with her viewfinder-ish kind of skill, which is actually her elemental skill. As a Catalyst user, Nahida's combat style is pretty unique. You may cast her elemental skill by tapping the skill button, or you may hold the button to enter an aiming mode. Opponents who are selected while aiming will be linked by Nahida's special mark. After you trigger elemental reactions on opponents who are linked and when they take damage from dendro cores, Nahida will unleash Tri Karma Purification, dealing dendro damage. Oh, this is so cool. Yeah, I love how it's like connecting the enemies together. Mm-hmm. Outside of combat, Nahida can use her elemental skill and enter the aiming mode we just mentioned to interact with certain harvestable items, allowing her to collect items directly to the inventory from a distance. Whoa, wait, wait, wait. Being able to harvest materials like that is going to be so cool. That'll really save us some time. Yeah. This skill may also have some additional uses, so travelers will have to give it a try themselves and see. Ooh, okay. Nahida's elemental burst is where things get really interesting. Upon unleashing her burst, Nahida manifests the Court of Dreams, expanding a special field. That's pretty amazing. The effect really does look like some royal court or palace. Yeah. Different effects will be produced based on whether there are pyro, electro, and hydro characters in the party. While Nahida is within the special field, a pyro member in the party will increase the damage of Tri-Karma Purification. An Electro Party member will decrease the intervals at which Tri Karma Purification is triggered, and a Hydro Party member will cause the duration of the field to be increased. Hmm. If there are at least two party members of the elemental types I just mentioned, then the effects will be increased further. Oh, this is blowing my mind right now. We'll really have to focus on which effects we want to achieve. 
and put some thought into our team's composition. Right? A key thing to remember is that these effects can be triggered while Nahida is not on the battlefield, as long as the active character remains in the special field radius. Oh. Nice. Also, in addition to Nahida, we have one other character joining us in version 3.2. <laughs> That's right. She's a very peculiar academia student. Her name is Layla. Most days, she looks super tired and anxious, which seems to be a direct result of her relentless struggle with her studies. Yeah, and not only is she frail and anxious looking, but she also studies astrology. So, it's no wonder people around her might consider her a little strange and mysterious. Mm. And even though she's always groaning about her studies, most of Layla's research work is actually fine overall. It's just her lack of confidence that's really holding her back. And that's when her unusual ability comes into play. And her ability is... sleepwalking. <laughs> yeah. While she is sleeping, Layla unleashes her true self, allowing her to regain the confidence she needs and activate the talents and strengths she's had all along. As soon as she starts sleepwalking, her unfinished papers no longer seem like the monumental tasks they were, and she completes them in no time. <laughs> this is definitely something only Layla can do. Our viewers shouldn't try to do this with their own homework. <laughs> but does Layla have any idea what happens when she's sleepwalking? I mean, does she know that she has this ability? Uh, she seems to be aware of it. <laughs> the papers are obviously full of her handwriting, after all. But there have been some weird instances. For example, once during crunch time while researching, she sleepwalked and climbed the wall of Salmio and then randomly bumped into Candace. Such weird occurrences have made her start to wonder what's really going on. <laughs> and aside from her sleepwalking, just like any other student, Layla has many typical things that she hopes to achieve, as well as some regrets. She wants to be able to make friends and go out and have fun, but it seems like she'll never be able to do any of that until she graduates. Hmm. And actually... I'm guessing that she uses her sleepwalking abilities in combat too, right? <laughs> you bet. Let's have a look at Layla in combat. Sweet. Even when we're not looking up at the stars, they're always there. <gasps> Watch you. It almost looks like she's sleeping while being protected by the shield. This shield not only protects Layla, but also creates night stars while it is active. When a character protected by the shield uses an elemental skill, more night stars will be created. Once four night stars have been accumulated, they will transform into homing shooting stars, dealing damage to any opponent's hit. Ooh. Ah, night stars. I love how her skills have a starry theme. It ties into her studies. <laughs> yeah, throughout the skill's duration, each time a night star is accumulated, the shield strength will increase. This effect can stack up to a maximum of four times. Whoa! Layla's elemental burst unleashes a dream sphere that constantly fires starlight slugs at opponents within its AoE, while also generating night stars for Layla's shield. Hmm. As a talented Ritawa, his student, Layla also comes in handy when crafting. When Layla crafts character talent materials, she has a set chance to receive double the product. Ah, nice. Sweet. Anyway, when can travelers expect to see these new characters available in-game? Great question. That brings us to our new event wishes. In the early part of version 3.2, Nahida and Yoimiya will be available. In the later part of the version, we'll be seeing rerun event wishes for Yaimiko and Tartaglia, and Layla will become available for the first time. Also, a new 5-star weapon, A Thousand Floating Dreams, will be appearing in the new weapon event wish. Oh, nice! By the way, I've heard that Layla's been getting ready recently to participate in Sumeru's Beast Tamer tournament. But before we get into that, I think it's time for us to take another break. We'll be back with the latest info on events coming in the version update. Welcome back to the version 3.2 special program, everyone! Next, we'll take a look at some of the new events for the coming update. 
an amazing fungus competition is about to begin in the lands of Sumeru. Not only has it attracted local competitors from Sumeru, but also spectators from other nations. Uh, a fungus competition? How does that even work? Aren't fungi dangerous? They're always attacking us in the wild. <laughs> I know it sounds a little weird, but you'll love it. In this contest, participants will use a special gadget called a Wisdom Orb to catch and train their fungi and participate in battle events. Although the fungi often pose as little troublemakers for us in the wild, using this gadget will allow travelers to establish a certain level of communication with them. Okay, so if I catch and train a Jade Plume Terror Shroom, then I should be pretty much unstoppable, right? Oh no, come on, that wouldn't be fair. <laughs> in this event, travelers will be able to sneak up on fungi in some certain areas to catch them. Unfortunately, the Jade Plume Terror Shroom is not one of those areas, Kimberly. Aww. If you end up startling them, they'll flee until they are outside a set distance. After catching different kinds of fungi, you can follow Paimon's suggestion and give them cute names. But most importantly, you will have to train your fungi. That sounds fun. Travelers will have to use special floral jelly ingredients to mix and form blends that your fungi enjoy and unlock their true potential. While mixing ingredients, you use copy, switch, and rotate functions, and place a preset formula you have in the corresponding spot. Aww, it looks kind of like jelly. I bet Paimon's going to be all over that. Hey, Paimon wouldn't ever do that! <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell why you didn't book that role. <laughs> and with all these different kinds of fungi, they should have different abilities, right? Yeah, so to work on their abilities, we'll use something called the Special Training Mode. In this mode, there will be two challenge types, coordinated assaults and zone defense. Travelers will be able to command their fungi's abilities, have them coordinate their attacks against a single target, and control them to defend the ley line monolith. Aw, they're so cute. This is gonna be so much fun, I can't wait. Yeah, me neither. As for the rewards, in addition to Primo Gems and various materials, once travelers have reached a certain phase of the event, they will also be able to summon the great and almighty merchant, Dory. And Layla will be appearing in the event storyline, as well as a familiar visitor from another nation. Hmm, any idea who it could be? Supposedly a fun guy, hmm? hmm? Uh. <laughs> okay, I see what you did there, I respect it. Hmm. Let's leave that for travelers to discover themselves in the event. Come on, guys, fun guy. Okay, next up we have a change of pace with an all-new Trials event. For this event, travelers will have to use characters' special abilities to complete specific objectives. For example, you may have to knock slimes into the goal by triggering an overloaded reaction with Yen Phase and Klee's attacks, or use Yelon's elemental skill to move quickly and dodge giant pinballs. Here are some others. Use Xiao's plunging attack to send platforms back to the ground, or use Beidou's elemental skill to hit the ball. Uh, this sounds like some pretty unusual training. Yeah, and to make things even more interesting, this event will support co-op gameplay. Oh, hmm. this sounds like it'll be a lot of fun to watch. But what about objectives for characters that maybe we haven't unlocked yet? No worries, we got you covered. All the corresponding characters will be provided as trial characters in the challenges. Ah, oh. perfect. In addition to these events, version 3.2 will also feature an event for our players to put their skills to the test. This time, we'll have a new edition of the Hypostatic Symphony event. Nice! So, what changes can travelers expect this time around? The most notable change, of course, will be the addition of the new Dendro Hypostasis. That's right, the last member of the Hypostasis family will be officially landing in version 3.2. Besides serving as a new open world boss, the Dendro Hypostasis will also be busy performing alongside its fellow Hypostases in the Hypostatic Symphony event. This time around, travelers will be facing challenges featuring the Dendro, Cryo, Pyro, and Hydro Hypostases. Before each challenge, travelers may select a buff effect to use. However, as you increase the difficulty, the number of uses will decrease and the enemies will become more challenging. So it'll be super important for travelers to plan the right moment to use these effects. Uh, so what options do we have once we run out of buffs? Travelers will still be able to use food and potions from their inventory. 
if you're aiming to just collect all the Primo Gem rewards, then don't worry. You won't need to up the difficulty too much. <sighs> okay, good to know. Whew. I, for one, will definitely not be upping the difficulty. <laughs> and just like before, you may tackle the challenges together with your friends once they have joined your world. Great. We can help each other out. Oh, yeah. Now that we've covered the challenge event, let's take a quick look at a couple more casual events coming our way in the new update. First, we'll be finding inspiration for an illustrator in the Outside the Canvas, Inside the Lens event. And once again, we'll be working together with Lieben in Marvelous Merchandise. It's also worth mentioning here that some optimizations have been made for the photo event this time around. Everyone will be able to select from some preset angles and can make use of the rotate and focus functions to take better pictures. <laughs> That's great! While you're out taking pictures, you may run into some interesting storylines along the way. So be sure not to miss Outside the Canvas, Inside the Lens. Man, I love these kinds of events! Sign me up! Yeah, me too! In addition to all these new events, we also have some news on system-related updates and optimizations. I'm really excited about the first of these, which is regarding the Serena Teapot. Starting with version 3.2, the Serena Teapot will be adding the long-awaited Replication System. Wow, that's super amazing! Yeah! This feature will allow travelers to use sharing codes to bring designs from other travelers' teapots and implement them in their own, or share their own teapot designs. I know there may be some travelers out there who have seen some amazing teapot designs that they've wanted to also create themselves, but didn't have the ability or time to make it. With this new function, travelers will be able to bring that creativity back to their own teapot or share their creativity with others. Get ready to hit up your friends with amazing teapot skills. Oh, I can't wait to see everyone sharing their designs, especially with me. <laughs> Which brings us to our final update to share with everyone. This one is regarding the game's available languages. Starting with version 3.3, which will be the update following this one, Genshin Impact will be adding Turkish and Italian to the game language settings. So, players who'd prefer to see the game's text and UI in those languages can look forward to that. The team truly hopes that travelers from all over the world can enjoy the game and start their own journeys through the world up to that. For further details, please check Genshin Impact's official channels and keep an eye out for future announcements and info. Wow, we've covered a ton of stuff. Seriously, it's a lot to take in. Mm-hmm. For sure. Well, everyone, I think we've covered just about everything coming our way in version 3.2, which means we've arrived at the end of our special program. Ah, uh, this was I fun. Know. Yeah. Yeah, mm. no, we covered a ton of stuff. So much stuff. Yeah, yeah. So many events too. But the most, like, the thing that I'm most excited about is, of course, Nahi the playable character, Nahi the playable character, Nahi the playable character. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> nice. Yeah, for me, it was definitely the Balladeer. Dude, it, lo it looks so insane. Yes. I have no idea how I'm going to do that. <laughs> yeah, no, for me, oh my gosh, uh, so many things. Battling the Dendro Hypostasis and, of course, the Fabulous Fungus Frenzy. Getting my little fungi and battling with them. And, <laughs> you know, the teapot, the Serena teapot. I'm so behind on my teapot, so I can't wait to you gotta get, on it. get some designs from others. Or at least, you know, get some get some inspiration uh, from getting a, another teapot design. <laughs> <laughs> and just as we mentioned earlier, even though the Samaru Archon quest will be reaching its final chapter here, it most definitely won't be the end of our journey in Samaru. In our story this time, we'll be encountering some interesting and mysterious content, and I hope it will be an amazing experience for all of our travelers. May the wisdom of the Dendro Archon be with all of you. See you in game, everyone. Bye. See ya. Bye-bye. <laughs>